Grave greetings, everyone. Welcome. If you hear that rapping at your door, it's just because we're taking a look at the Crow Premium Format figure. Now, I'm super excited to have Mr. Edward R. Pressman with me. How you doing, sir? It's great to be here. Uh, I mean, is, this is the first time uh, you've, you've gotten uh, to see yeah, him this no, close. It's remarkable. It's, Thank you. It's so elegantly done, and the guy is a, a real <laughs> sexy <laughs> hunk. As sexy as you remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm, I, I really just want to you know, get into it. I, this is such an iconic look. It's such an mm -hmm. iconic film. When, you know, if you can remember going back to the days of starting this, did you have any idea, any inkling that it was going to be such a cult classic? No, but I remember uh, being introduced to the comic and then uh, after a a bit of a journey, we met Alex Proyas, right. and uh, he was the key at the time wow. to seeing w what could happen. We never expected it to, to last as it right. has, yeah. but uh, you know, the, the original format w was designed you know, by Proyas mm -hmm. and by uh, Andrew Mason, who was his uh, Australian like effects designer, oh, okay. who's gone on to do uh, Matrix and other oh, wow. great things, and Alex has gone on to many things. And B big fan of trench coats in all those <laughs> films. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm interested because you you bring up the the comic um, again, the comic being released in 1989, and with the film uh, coming out in 1994, I'm curious if if there was a lot of uh, research time in the middle between 1989 and 1994 when the film was actually uh, released. And films take sometimes a long time yeah. to, to uh, be put together and financed and designed. And The Crow, at the time, seemed very daring, original, and uh, right. so dark. Yeah. And, uh, it was sort of a counter Marvel comic. It was. It, right. it came from Obara's own personal life, yes. and, and that was something that was so unique and to be respected. Uh, but gave the whole uh, property a depth and a Some significance. Realism. Yeah. Because it came, yeah. it came from Obar's passion. And so I'm, I'm curious, uh, you know, if we could step away from the crow for just a second. Sure. You know, you know, growing up, you know, you went into a uh, clearly. I mean, you've had such a, such a successful career. Uh, you know, where did that sort of spark come from to lead you into such a creative medium in filmmaking? Where you, is that from child? Did you know immediately from childhood that you wanted to go into filmmaking and producing films? Uh, no, I think I wanted to be a baseball player. <laughs> but uh, it's never too late. Uh, yeah, but but I think uh, when I went to to college, mm -hmm. uh, I had a roommate who, who was uh, father was into film, and. Uh, even earlier, when I was in high school at Fieldston, we were taught the uh, modern European history through the history of film. Mm -hmm. So we studied, you know, the very origin of German Expressionism. And back back then, I, I had an uncle who owned uh, two movie theaters. In in, in uh, uh, the Bronx, mm. and I used to s sell popcorn, and it was double features, so I'd see f four films a, oh, wow. a, a day. So I loved film, but it seemed so remote and not you know possible. Uh, when I met uh, my roommate in, in in school. And he, he was serious. We never actually made anything back then. But soon after that, in graduate school, I, I, I was at London School of Economics and met 
Paul Williams, who, who became my partner, and we did Badlands and the early De Palma films, Phantom of the Paradise, and Sisters. Okay. Uh, and then we split up, and I went on on my own. But I've always had a a fondness for the the, the genre. Right. Now, Ed, it's it's come to my understanding that your your family does, you know, we are a collectible company. You, you guys come from toys as well, right? So, you know, my father started a Pressman toy, and uh, you know, mid, mid '30s, 1930s, and uh, he the company grew. He was called the Marble King, Marble King, because during the Second World War. Uh, it was, it, was, it was very tough to get marbles, for, for the, and marbles were a very popular plaything right. at the time. And uh, somehow he had an access to marbles. <laughs> he was and, the king. And, and, and he created uh, Chinese checkers, which was uh, a popular game yeah. that, that used the marbles. Right. <laughs> Uh, but the company expanded and got into, my, my mom ran the company after my father died when I, when I was 16. And uh, she had a great sense of style and taste. And she did the first tie-ins to television advertising. Really? And, and uh, sh she had one rule which I guess the crow doesn't follow, which was uh, no guns. Oh, she, 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 was, she was a pacifist. <laughs> it breaks the rule a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, growing up in that environment, uh, it was a natural thing to 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 be attracted to, or to know about, like Masters of the Universe, which was right. a a popular toy mm -hmm. and uh, it took us several years to get it made as a film and then Judge Dredd uh, I think th they all a lot of them came out of a toy uh, background mm -hmm. you know we were doing films from games and comic books when that was considered verboten. I mean, we were doing Street Fighter and right. uh, films like that where uh, there were unusual sources at the time. And now, yeah, it's I, become, now it's everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, especially being this, you know, this, the collectible company that we are and we live in pop culture, Street Fighter, mm -hmm. Conan the Barbarian, The Crow. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is going to be a hard question to answer, but is, are there any of those films that told just, no, just they no, hold a special place in your heart no, just a little no, bit more? No, no, certainly The Crow. It, yeah. it turned out to be such a, a great movie, mm -hmm. but the film that really put the company on the map was, was Conan, as you mentioned, because right. mm -hmm. we went around for eight years trying to get that film made. And uh, Arnold had this accent that n no one thought could possibly work in, right. in an American film. And uh, I, I remember going place to place with Arnold. And wh wherever he went, he was treated like a star, even though he wasn't yet. Right. He was a bodybuilder. But he had an aura, and he had a mm -hmm. command and, and an intelligence that uh, made him someone that we, we, when the studio said they wanted to make the film but consider other actors, we said that was a condition. Right. And it's, it's like, I think the only two actors we ever signed to a multi-picture deal mm -hmm. was Arnold and Brandon. And Brandon. Right. And Brandon would have been, I think, a, a, a huge star. A mega star. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. and you know, we have, uh, we're, we're so fortunate to be in an era where, you know, pop culture is completely influencing all of the media and, you know, and thus popping up collectibles everywhere, like, like the crow here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm curious, you know, personally speaking, do you, do you collect? Do you collect anything? 
even now, other than incredible films that you've made? We, we, we collect our posters and we, oh, okay. have, we, and we have a, a very large storage facility which keeps getting bigger and bigger and <laughs> more expensive to, to maintain. But it, it has s some props, like, like the, the mask from Phantom of the Paradise. Right. I treasure that. And, and every six months or so, Guillermo del Toro calls and says, you know, can I buy your <laughs> Phantom mask? Mm -hmm. And I've never been wanting to sell. Haven't budged yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> but but I, I keep a, a few important props that uh, have a certain resonance and of course. history to them. So you were, I mean, you were attached to these films that are now pillars of pop culture. I mean, I mean mm -hmm. Street Fighter, Conan the Barbarian, you know, Masters of the Universe, He-Man. Were you into like superheroes, like the Superman, new Spider-Man? Did you have any particular uh, love for any one superhero? I was a Superman fan. Nice. <laughs> as, a, as a child, I, I grew into Batman as I matured. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all do, yeah. <laughs> Like I say, what, what attracted me to The Crow was its difference from those other comic books, which were uh, great shows, but less personal. I just, I love this piece so yeah, much. Yeah. And, I, and I know uh, yourself and, and your team that are sitting back here, you guys yeah. saw it and you loved it. I mean. What's so unique to me is the, the, the quality, of the workmanship even on the, the clothing down yeah. to the most minute detail, and obviously the that that face. If you look at the back, it, yeah. the, the workmanship is mm -hmm. is detailed all the way. Yeah, we're around. very we're very fortunate here to have an incredible team from you know our painters to our cut and sew team. I believe it was uh, Esther Scandunis who worked on this piece. Um, again, we're just really really fortunate to have it. And you know before and you're you're still increasingly busy. I mean, you were, yeah, he was answering emails right up until we went uh, live here. That's how mm -hmm. the work ethic. I, uh, but I have to know, it, 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 does it ever get, you know, does it ever get normal seeing, you know, however many years, 20 years later, still seeing collectibles made of this film that, you know, you maybe had an idea that it was gonna be this cold no, classic, no, but you were just. No, when I walked maybe. in <laughs> to, to the studio and, and saw this, it, it astonished me. Because okay, I've, I've seen models, yeah, but this tops them all. Oh well, thank you so much, and, and thank you so much for joining us, Ed. I I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. Yeah, um, again, all of you, uh, wherever you are, you can go to side show forward slash the crow. You can get yours. Uh, go watch the crow all the time. Watch it always. <laughs> it's such a great film. Um, thank you guys all so much for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show. Be sure to subscribe by hitting the S icon on your screen and click the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show.